Good morning. It's a great blessing to be in the house of the Lord today, isn't it? Praise is one thing that we will continue to do even after in the afterlife. Right? You all believe that? To praise our Lord is such a good thing, is such a magnificent thing that um, even in our deepest troubles, if you are able to praise Him, we tend to forget our troubles and rely on Him more. Right? Let us read this wonderful psalm uh, that talks more about uh, praising the great works of the Lord. Psalm 111, if you can please turn your Bibles to. Psalm 111, and if you're comfortable standing, you may please stand as we read this responsively. Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the council of the upright and in the assembly. Glorious and majestic are his deeds, and his righteousness endures forever. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. You may all please be seated. To him belongs eternal praise. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. And as we pray, let us remember all the good things and praise him one more time. Let us worship him from, up, from the bottom of our hearts with a whole heart. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you so much, Lord, for this wonderful time that you have given to us. Thank you, Master, for counting us worthy to be here. It's a good and wonderful thing, O Master, to praise you, to worship you, to adore you. Oh, what a privilege it is, O Lord, to talk to the Father who created us, to talk to the God, O Master, and to thank him through praises for all the good things that you're doing to us. What a great privilege it is, O Lord Jesus. Father God, even though we don't give you the worth that you deserve at times, O Master, Father God, even though we don't praise you as you ought to be praised at times, O Lord, Father God, you're still kind to us, you're still love us, you still are with us no matter what, O Lord. Father, thank you so much for such a privilege that you, have, that you are bestowing on us, O Lord Jesus. Father God, thank you for the word. Father God, you have taken each and every need of ours into your hands and you, for, you are caring us accordingly, O Lord. You provide food for us, O Master. You provide a redemption, O Lord Jesus, through the um, you, you provided redemption, Master. Father God, we thank you for all such good things that you are doing in our lives. You gave us everything, O oh Lord Jesus, for us to live this life. Even though we face those troubles in our lives, so Master, we know that you are there. All those troubles that are so big for us, O oh Master, that are so difficult for us to look at, O oh Master, those are very small things in your, in your sight, O oh Lord. Thank you, for, thank you for being such a great God, O oh Master, such a wonderful God for taking us through all those things that seems impossible to us, O Master. Father God, we thank you for each and everyone in, who have reached this service, O Master. We thank you for everyone who are on the way, O Lord Jesus. We thank you for everyone who have joined us online, O Master. Father God, you meet our needs today, O Lord Jesus, through your still voice. Father, you meet all the needs, O Master. Father God, you help us, O Lord, as we, as we go through some deep trials, O Master, or as we are in some troubles, O Lord Jesus, where we do not have the hope to see another day, O Lord. Father, help us to remember that you have overcome all those troubles, O Lord Jesus, and we have that hope in you, O Lord. Father, we, th we thank you for that word that you will give us today, O Lord. O o Lord. Father, we commit the rest of the time into your hands as we worship you, O Lord, as we adore you. We pray that you accept our praises, O Master. We pray that you accept our worship, our songs, O Lord Jesus. As we hear your word, O Master, we pray that you talk to us one other time, O Lord, in your still voice and you help us, Lord Jesus. Father God, we commit all these things into your matchless hands and I ask all this in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The worship team will lead us further. all rise to our feet church good morning
speaks rain Nothing is impossible to you Blind eyes are open Strongholds are broken I'm living by faith Nothing is impossible There's fullness of joy. Amen. Do you believe that? Yes. I can say with all my heart that I am able to draw my next breath, that I'm able to blink my eye only with his permission. It's only because everything that he is keeping it right within, all around, all the things that he's holding together. 
you know sometimes we are so caught up with our own lives and uh, you know we really miss and we really you know take it granted the grace of god all the things that we cannot see all the things that he is holding together can we just thank god and say god thank you thank you for the gift of life thank you for everything that you have given to me thank you for all my troubled times for they have built patience and perseverance in me thank you for any thorn in your flesh then you can say that i can live only by the grace of god just as apostle paul said right amen it's only by his grace that we are alive it's only by his grace that we sustain even when we think about that just yes, you know if you take a moment to think about that the way we worship the way we exalt his name the way we shout out to him it should just bring tears to your eyes for all that he is doing when was the last time that you worshiped like that when was the last time when you gave your heart all to god and said god i sing to you and you alone it's nothing about me it's all about you my church even as i tell this to myself may i encourage you let us worship god with the best that we have through all your trouble times through all your weaknesses give it all to god reach out to him and he will reach out to you amen can we clap for god because he will do that and he is going to do that this morning amen for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son you know the song for god so love you know right should we revise the song yes no no right okay let's do it together you you guys will sing with me yes
Jesus is waiting there with open arms. Father Lord, Amen. You know this song, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, right? I'd like to teach you a new part in this song. This is not there in the original hymn. So we'll, say, we'll learn that part and then we'll go to the main song, right? It goes like, uh, You bring us joy, 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 we adore thee. You got it, right? Sing with me. You bring us joy, 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 we adore thee. We adore. Come on, church. You bring us joy, 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 we adore thee. I can't hear it. Come on, louder. You bring us joy, we adore thee. All right, let's go. Come on. Everything around us is a storm. 
Father Lord, you still the storm. When, when, when all your disciples were caught in the boat of Father, one word from you and the storm still down of Father Lord. That is your power. That is who you are. Help us trust in you. Help us count on you, Father. For you are wonderful. Nothing can match your greatness, your love, your mercy, your abounding love over us, oh Father. Help us always be in awe of you. Help us always seek you. Help us long to become more like you, Father. Jesus, help us.
divine rest my soul in Christ alone. in quiet and easy voice. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So even as we wait for God to speak to us, may we just remain focused on who He is and all that He does. And I'm sure we can go back rejoicing that we've had an amazing encounter in the presence of God. Father God, even as we are ready to listen through your servant whom you have appointed for today, Pray that you shield him behind the shadow of your cross. And our master, use him mightily so that we'll be sensitive to your beautiful world that will, word that will be revealed in numerous ways. And help us, O oh God, to respond the way you want us to. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you so much. The rain has stopped and we praise God. As I've announced last Sunday, if you are here, most of you were. And for all those who've joined us virtually, hundreds of them who join us week on week, we thank you once again. Oh, I just want to introduce the speaker for today. No, his name is Fini Prem Kumar, and he is here with us. And he is the founder and president of Truth Matters International, a ministry that is focused on confronting those in the academy with the truth of the gospel and challenging them, those who are in the church, to live out the content of the gospel in the most creative and concrete ways. So if you had seen the poster, the title is there for today, given by him. And he is an apologist and um, apologetic. And uh, he is a scientist and he's an evangelist as well. And uh, he's very passionate about evangelism. And uh, he has been speaking in numerous churches, organizations, conventions, youth con conferences, and mission related um, events. And he's a regular lecturer at Oxford. So we have the privilege of hearing somebody who's spoken in the Oxford University for seven consecutive years through the invitation of Professor Alistair McGrath. And um, he regularly addresses certain important uh, um, you know, areas which he is equipped to, and that is philosophy, science, technology, ethics, and related topics. And he has also presented you know, academic papers and lectures at Harvard, MIT, Yale, and UC Berkeley, among others, all top-notch universities. So may we put our hands together to welcome <laughs> Fini Prem Kumar to share God's word. And he is a good singer as well. So he would want to sing a song and lead us 
into the message that God has burdened him to speak today. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Pastor, for those kind words of introduction. It's such an honor for me to be here, and I thank God for the privilege and the opportunity he's given me to share his word with you. Uh, before we get into his word, I'm just going to sing a very familiar hymn. Please sing along with me if you know the words. visiting preacher was delivering a sermon at a church and after he was done he was standing in the back of the church and one of the elderly churchgoers went up to him and said you know preacher today your sermon reminded me of two things it reminded me of God's peace and it reminded me of God's love the preacher was rather taken back because he had never heard those words committed about his sermon so he asked that person to explain themselves that person looked at the preacher and said, it reminded me of God's peace because everything that you said surpassed all my understanding. <laughs> then she said, it reminded me of God's love because the sermon really endured forever. <laughs> so it is my prayer and hope this morning that as I share with you what God has placed upon my own heart, that it will enlighten your mind, that it will bring a sense of truth to bear upon our lives and that by God's grace and for his glory, I'll be able to do it within the time that has been allotted to me. It's such an honor for me to be here, and I look forward to all that God has in store for us. Before we get into his word, would you bow your heads with me in prayer? You see, my dear brother and my dear sister, if God is not present, then all this will be in vain. But the Bible says, 
where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. And so, Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for the truth found within. We thank you for your son. Lord, we thank you for the cross. We thank you for the empty grave. We thank you because you're not just a God of history. You're a God of a present reality, alive and well and active in our lives. Even now, as we open up your word, as we meditate on your truth, I pray that you will speak to us. Help us to understand the kind of God you are and the kind of people that you want us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, please turn with me to the Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. Mark 4, 35 to 41. Can someone please read that portion of Scripture? Any version will do. Mark 4, 35 to 41. Thank you, brother. You see, the context of this passage is one of Jesus preaching to the multitudes for an extended period. And then in verse 35, he looks at his disciples and he says, let us pass over to the other side. Let us go from one side to the other as they made that journey on that day. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, life itself is a journey, is it not? Every single moment, every single day, every single week, every single month, every single year, we journey on in life through the various passages of life, all the ups and downs of life, the good times, the bad times, times of joy, times of sorrow, mountaintop experiences, and sometimes we walk the dark valleys of life. I was just talking to Pastor Peter earlier on, and he was sharing his testimony. I was praising God. And I was thinking as I was singing the song, how great is our God that he can take someone without any hope, without any future, and call him to the ministry. In this life, in our life journey, so many things that are uncertain, and we tarry on from day to day in uncharted waters. And as we make the journey from one side to the other, much like the disciples on that day, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, Jesus wants to give us three promises for the journey. Three very simple yet profound promises if we understand what it is and apply it in our lives. The first promise is this. It's very simple. He gives us the promise of his presence. The promise of his presence. Look at verse 36. Verse 36 says that they took him as he was in the boat or they took him as he was in the ship, depending on your translation. He is a God whose presence is with us, a father who abides with us. He is with you. He is with me in our journey of life, in the boat that we are in, in the uncharted waters of life. His presence is with us. St. Athanasius declared, the self-revealing word is in every dimension, up above in creation, down below in the incarnation, in the depths in Hades, in the breath all over this world. His presence pervades all things. His presence pervades all things. 
My dear brother, my dear sister, Emmanuel, God with us, is not just something that we repeat during the Christmas season. If you're a Christian, if I'm a Christian, that is the energizing reality in our lives that God is with us. His presence is with us. That is why the Bible says that we live and move and have our being in him, saturated by the presence of he who abides with us. We have the promise of his presence. But my dear friends, the promise of his presence does not exempt us from the storms of life. That's the word of God. Anyone who tells you different is not preaching the word. You have the promise of his presence. I have the promise of his presence. But the promise of his presence does not exempt you. It does not exempt me from the storms of life. Look at verse 37. Verse 37 says that there arose a great storm and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Matthew in his gospel uses the Greek word seismos from which we get the English word seismology and seismograph. This storm was of such seismic proportions that it frightened even the experienced fishermen in the boat. Think about it. These were experienced men. They knew the seas. They knew the waters. They knew how to navigate the boat. And yet they were absolutely frightened. Such a great storm. Such a great storm. Such a seismic storm. A storm of seismic proportions. We have the promise of his presence. But the promise of his presence does not exempt us from the storms of life. In fact, it was because they were following Jesus that they ended up experiencing the storm in the first place. If they had stayed on the shore, they would have been exempt from the storm. My dear brother, my dear sister, sometimes following Jesus puts you in the middle of the storm. Sometimes you can be in the center of God's will and still be in the center of the storm. Are you hearing me this morning? That's the word of God. Sometimes we don't understand. I am following you, Lord. I am with you. I am abiding in you. And yet, I am facing the storm in life. I don't understand. The equations of life are not coming together for me. I cannot make sense of it. There doesn't seem to be any light at the end of the tunnel. What do I do with the storms of life? Following him does not exempt us from the storms of life. A little girl was given the privilege of going up to a hilltop where her elder brother enjoyed playing. When she got to the pathway that led up to the hill, she began to murmur and complain. There are only stones and bumps here, she said. There is no smooth path up to the hill. Her brother looked at her and asked her, how else do you think we'll get to the top? The stones and the bumps are what we step on to get there. My dear brother, my dear sister, God can use every stone. God can use every bump. God can use every situation. God can use every circumstance. God can even use the winds and the waves that you and I face in order to bring his purposes to pass. That's the sovereignty of the sovereign God whom we worship. A sovereign God who says, my presence is with you no matter what you face in life. David Brainerd, the great missionary, once said, There is no trial, there is no trouble, there is no tribulation, there is nothing that can ever touch me, unless, first and foremost, it has gone past God and gone past Christ. If it has come that far, then it has come with a great big purpose. The promise of his presence was not given so that they could avoid the storm. The promise of his presence was given so that they could get through the storm. Every step of the way, his presence is with you and his presence is with me. You see, he steadies our soul sometimes even when our heart is breaking. So the real question is not if God is present. He is. He is. His word says he is. The real question is this. Are we aware of his ever-abiding presence? Look at verse 38. What does it say? Jesus was sleeping in the stern of the ship. Where is the stern of the ship? In the back of the ship. That's usually where we place him in our own lives, don't we? 
all the way in the back and we run around in circles, much like the disciples on that stormy night, trying to do everything that we can, expending our resources, our abilities, our talents, our gifts. When nothing works, when everything fails, what do we do? We cry out to him, Master, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Don't you care that we're going to die, that we're going to perish? My dear friend, he's right there in your lifeboat, in your life journey, waiting for you, patiently waiting for you to acknowledge his presence. To acknowledge his presence. A little girl could not go to sleep. She kept crying through the night. Her father tried to console her. He brought her favorite dolls and toys. She kept on crying. Finally, he asked her out of a sense of desperation, what can I do, honey? How can I stop you from crying? She brushed aside her tears, looked at him and said, just stay with me. Just stay with me. I can get through the darkest night if only his presence is with me. I have faced many dark nights in my life, as I'm sure you have. Some of you are going through that right now. See that right here. You're going through some difficulty, some darkness in your life. The only thing that will get you through is the promise of his presence. To know that Emmanuel, God, is with you every step of the way. In every dimension of your life. God said to Moses in Exodus 33, 14, My presence will go with you and I will give you peace. The psalmist asked, Where can I flee from your presence? Where can I go from your spirit? God is right there wherever I go. You see, I have no confidence in a person who stands within the security of the shores and wishes me well while I'm sailing the bumpy and stormy seas of life. But I have absolute faith and confidence and hope in a person whose presence is with me in those troubled waters of life as he takes my hand and leads me through. Dottie Rambo, the great hymn writer, wrote that marvelous hymn many years ago. I feel the touch of hands so warm and tender. He's leading me in paths that I must trot. I'll have no fear for Jesus walks beside me, for I'm sheltered, sheltered in the very arms of God. Sheltered in the very arms of God. I may not know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow, and he holds my hand, and he holds your hand this morning, and you can stand secure in the promise of his presence. Whatever you're going through in life, I don't know what your particular struggle is. It may be many things. And you're sitting here thinking, how am I going to get through this? What will happen tomorrow, next week, next month, end of this year? In my life, in my family, in the lives of my children. How do I get through this? Certain things I can speak of. Certain things I cannot even share. God knows your heart. God knows your heart. And he wants to encourage you today based on the word of God. He is with you. We have the promise of his presence. Secondly, we have the promise of his power. Look at verse 39. What does it say? It says that Jesus arose and he looked at the winds and the storms and he said, Quiet, peace, be still. And the Bible says, the scripture says, that immediately, immediately the winds ceased. And there was a great calm. And there was a great calm. You see, the promise of his power that steadies your soul and mine when we face the stormy seas of life is the fact that everything that is over your head and everything that is over my head is still under his feet. It is under the feet of the master. Do you believe that this morning? It is under the feet of the master, the God of all power, the God of all authority, the sovereign Lord of the universe. John Wesley, the father of Methodism, once said, he holds all things in the hands of his omnipotence and beneath the eye of his omniscience. He holds all things in the hands of his omnipotence and beneath the eye of his omniscience. That is why Job 9.8 says that he walketh upon the waves of the sea. Psalm 104.13 says that he walketh upon the wings of the wind. When he says, let it be so, it is so. When he says, let it be done, it is done. By one word of his mouth, he created the entire cosmos, the entire universe, and brought it into being from the complexity of the macro world of gravity to the micro world of the quantum. 
not relative power but all power not some power but maximal power universal power cosmic power unparalleled power unlimited power Alfred Noyes once said, the universe is neither centered on the earth nor on the sun. It is centered on God himself. Charles Spurgeon, the great preacher, declared, God's power is like himself, self-existent and self-sustaining. The mightiest of men cannot add a shadow of increased power to the omnipotent one. He sits on no butterous throne. He leans on no assisting arms. His court is not maintained by its courtiers, nor does he borrow splendor from his creatures. He is himself the great source and originator of all power when John 1 1 says in the beginning was the word it does not mean that the word had a beginning the word was is in the imperfect tense so it literally means in the beginning was the word is the word and always will be the word the God of all eternity the God of all power Every verse in scripture, every passage in scripture, every book in scripture, all 66 books written by 40 authors over a span of 1400 years speak to the greatness of our creator God. And he's the one who declares in verse 39, peace be still on that stormy night. But do you know what the wonderful thing is, my dear friend? 2000 years later, he stands in the midst of the storms you and I face and he still declares, peace be still. God has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. What he did 2,000 years ago, he is able to do at this church this morning. He's able to do in the context of your life, in the crucible of your experience. He's not just a God of the past. He's a God of a present reality. And he brings about his power to bear in our lives when we look to him. A young military officer and his new bride were on a honeymoon cruise. And the ship, this boat that they were in, was being tossed about because of the storms. The young bride was absolutely frightened. And she began to cry and murmur and complain. That officer knew the captain of the ship. And he knew that the ship was in good hands, so he was very calm. And she got even more angry because he was not expressing the sentiments that she was expressing. She was probably an Indian bride. <laughs> This officer kept consoling her. She just would not listen. Finally, he took his sword, pulled it out of its sheath, took the pointed edge and put it to her throat. She looked at him and smiled. You're not afraid, he asked. No, she said. I'm not afraid of the sword when it's in the hands of the one who loves me. And at that moment, she got it. You don't have to be afraid of the storm when it's in the hands of the one who loves you and cares about you. Do you realize, my dear brother and my dear sister, that he's Lord over nature? Every dimension, area, and arena of your life, he has total control. He is not taken by surprise. He knows the end from the beginning, the alpha and the omega. And he says, I have your life and every strand of your hair in the palm of my hands and my power is available to you. Isaiah calls them the Prince of Peace because when he steps into a situation, he always speaks peace. Peace be still. The great miracle that night was not just the coming of the seas. I think the greater miracle was the coming of the hearts of the disciples as they saw the power of God at display in their midst. My dear friend, what impossibilities are you facing in your life today? What challenges are you facing? What valleys are you walking? What are the things you're afraid of? What keeps you up at night? What are the things that make you apprehensive about the future? Commit it all to him. He has the power and the authority to bring things to pass in your life and through your life because we have the promise of his power we have the promise of his presence we have the promise of his power and finally and quickly we have the promise of his very person look at verse 40 jesus looks at them he looks at the disciples and he asks them why 
Why were you so afraid? Why did you not believe? And then verse 41 says, they were exceedingly fearful. They were so fearful. And they looked at each other and they said, what manner of man is this that even the winds and the seas obey him? Who is this Jesus? Who is this man? He has the elements of nature under his control. What manner of man is this? See, earlier on it, it was cowardly fear. Now they are fearful because they are filled with a sense of awe in the presence of Christ. My dear brother, my dear sister, true worship begins when you stand before him with a sense of awe, speechless in his presence. That is why we come before him with a sense of reverence. Worship is not a casual thing in the economy of the kingdom. Are you hearing me this morning? He is hallowed. We come before him with a sense of fear and trembling because he is God Almighty. With a sense of awe, a sense of being speechless in the presence of a God who is able to do all things. You see, it is not just a murky presence in the background. It is not just some cosmic power out there. Some people talk about God as if he's some force that you tap into. That's not the God of the Bible. His presence and his power are centered in the reality and the essence of his person. And unless you have a relationship with this person, unless you intimately walk with him, unless you're a disciple of this person, you won't experience his presence or his power. We have his presence. We have his power. We have his very person. And when you realize who he is, the true nature of this God, of this person, then you too will stand before him with a sense of awe, speechless, with a sense of bewilderment. Richard Foster, in one of his books, gives a marvelous definition of worship. He says, worship is the human response to the divine initiative. Worship is the human response to the divine initiative, to a God who became man, to a creator who became the redeemer, to the word that became flesh and dwelt among us in his very person. Organic union with the human race in order to seek and to save that which was lost. God himself in the flesh. Not an appearance of God, not an avatar, but God in the flesh. That is why the early church or the early church fathers used that term, hypostatic union. 100% God, 100 human, 100% human. Not 50-50, 100% God, 100% human being. That's why Isaiah is so careful in his prophecy of Christ. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For unto us a child has been born, but unto us a son has been given. Because the child was naturally born and the son was supernaturally given. The second person of the Trinity who has existed for all eternity. This is the person we're talking about. Christ. There is no one in history like him. He is unparalleled. He is unprecedented. James Irvin, the commander of Apollo 13, was walking on the moon and he thought to himself, this is the greatest and the most noble achievement of humanity down through the ages, down through the centuries, man walking on the moon. At that moment, the Lord spoke to him and said, I did something even greater. I walked on the earth. There is no one like him unparalleled in human history. That is why John Newton, the slave trader who was saved by the grace of God said, how sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ears. It soothes his sorrows, heals his wounds, and drives away all his fears. Napoleon Bonaparte, the French emperor once said, 
I know men and Jesus Christ is no mere man. Between him and every other person, there are no possible terms of comparison. Alexander, Caesar, Charlemagne and I conquered empires, but on what did we rest the creations of our genius upon force? Christ alone, Christ alone conquered purely by his love. That is how he still conquers the hearts of men and women all over the world. By his love. And this loving, gracious Savior says to you and I, in this journey of life, you have my presence. In this uncertain journey of life, you have my power. In this journey of life, you have my very person. I am with you and I myself will carry you through. That's what Isaiah says. I myself will carry you through. When you feel you can't go on anymore, he himself will bear you in his arms and he himself will carry you through every step of the way. Henry Morehouse was a noble evangelist and pastor. How many of you have heard of him? Henry Morehouse. At one point, he was very burdened in his life and in his ministry. One day he came back home. His daughter Minnie, who was paralyzed from the head down, was sitting in the porch. He went up to her and said, where is mother? She said, mommy's upstairs. He had a package for his wife, so he looked at Minnie and said, let me give this package to mommy, then I'll come and take care of you. Minnie looked at her father and said, oh papa, let me, let me carry the package to mommy. Henry Morehouse absolutely was heartbroken. He began to weep looking at his paralyzed daughter. He looked at her and asked her, Minnie dear, you can barely carry yourself. How will you carry this package? Oh, Papa, said Minnie, why don't you place the package on my lap? I'll carry the package and you, you carry me. And that is what Morehouse did. He gently placed the package on Minnie's lap. Minnie, this paralyzed child, carried that package and he carried Minnie up the stairs. As he was walking up the stairs, the word of the Lord came to him that this was just his position in his life and in his ministry. He was carrying all of his burdens, but was not the very person of God himself ultimately carrying him. Oh, my dear brother, my dear sister, he will carry you. He will carry you. I can say this because he has carried me. So many trials, so many struggles, so many tribulations, so many tragedies, so many things I've come through, only being the reason because he has carried me through. This is not mere theory. This is lived reality. The Bible says he'll carry you through. We have the promise of his presence. We have the promise of his power. We have the promise of his very person. Let me just conclude with an illustration because it brings a lot of hope to my own heart. King George, speaking to a nation in distress in 1939, the nation of England was going through so much turmoil and trouble. He ended his address with these words. I said to the man at the gate of the year, give me a light so that I may tread safely into the unknown. The man at the gate of the year said, go out into the darkness and put your hand in the hand of God and it shall be to you better than the light and safer than any known way. And so as I conclude, I say to you, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, put your hand in the hand of God for he promises you his presence. Put your hand in the hand of God for he promises you his power. Put your hand, whatever you're going through, Put your hand in the hand of God, for he promises you his very person. And it shall be to you better than the light and safer than any known way. Step into all the uncertainties of your tomorrows, standing on the promises of God. And he will take you by his grace and for his glory from one side to the other. Would you bow your heads with me in prayer? Lord, I thank you once again for your word, words of life. May those words be embedded in our hearts. Help us to embody it in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
why don't we just put up our hands together for <laughs> that straight word, short and crisp. I gave him the full time, he used only half time. <laughs> uh, but I praise God <clears throat> for the word that God gave us today. Yes, he is the one who will take us to the other side. Many a times our focus is not on that first line. The focus is so much on they being caught up in the storm and Jesus still in the storm. But the promise was there before the journey. And that is what it is. And I'm sure God has really ministered to each one of us. Time to bring our offering to God. As we sing this song, may we give our best to God. There's only one announcement. I'll... I'll I'll tell what it is. So all those who have joined us online, please listen to the announcement because it is important. summit last month. It happens once a year. We did the virtual summits here before COVID. <clears throat> and it's another great opportunity for us to host that summit on October the 2nd. It's a holiday for everybody. Uh, so please block your calendar. And uh, ideally it is if we have to host the summit with all those uh, sessions, then it is two days. But we know that two days is uh, not feasible for many. So GLS chooses the best of those sessions and uh, we have the opportunity to also say what sessions we could want to, you know, uh, really telecast here. So these are, for those who have attended in the past, these are the same sessions. These are all recorded there. But then there will be facilitators here who will facilitate after each session. And that's a time of discussion, a short discussion. And you will have the entire uh, booklet with you. Uh, so this is on October 2nd. It's in English. Later on, over the next few months, they will translate these sessions into a couple of Indian languages. I know for sure more than four or five. So please uh, register. We are telling you well in advance. Uh, next week, hopefully, our tech team will um, uh, have a Google form in the app and we'll send you a notification. But if you think that is also a hassle, just send an SMS or WhatsApp to our church number, which is 733-733-5571. Nobody 
picks up that for phone if you call <laughs> so it's only whatsapp or sms so you just need to say gls you don't even have to type global leadership summit gls october 2nd gls i want to register give your name or you have two three people coming with you uh, gls ideally has a registration fees they keep it standard at 500 but then um, uh, we are not insisting on that uh, but if you can pay you pay uh, there is no problem but we will take care of uh, what we need to uh, you know uh, give to gls so um, that is from bethel but then we would want most of you to come uh, you know the kind of seating we have here so that will be limited seating uh, so uh, please don't delay and uh, start re registering from today this is from 9 to 4 and when you register please come because uh, when we saw the prior events about 20 percent people don't turn up and when it's a full day event, there is a cost involved because we prepare lunch, there will be tea and so many other things and the material. So I'm sure uh, you will come. So um, uh, think through if you have already made some plans, try and make some adjustments if possible. But I'm telling you, it's worth it. You don't have to travel all the way to the US. If you want, you can. <laughs> and the cost of stay and uh, the uh, you know amount that you have to pay to GLS even that's those summits are also not free everything has a cost so um, this is the first one of this year that's going to happen here they they will have the summits across our country over the next few months this year and next month as well next year as well so uh, be the first it's a blessing to host uh, the summit here so this is the only announcement I have so please uh, send an SMS uh, and then we will send you a confirmation as we get closer. So October 2nd, 9 to 4 is GLS Summit right here at Bethel. You can tell other Christian friends as well if they want to attend, um, do, do let them know. Hopefully, they'll send us the poster and things like that by next week or so because we are yet to pick up those five important sessions because in fact, for me, all of them are important. So very difficult to choose five out of what 12 or 12 or 13 sessions so this is the only announcement rest all whatever is happening throughout the week will will happen as is um I, i'm happy to say that uh, my brother danny is there no okay my my brother danny for whom you've been praying for more than three years now uh, he had come here before after he recovered from blood cancer and then as most of you know uh, blood cancer relapsed uh, last August uh, is when we got the confirmation. He went through the transplant on the 13th of December last year. So it's it's been close to uh, eight months for sure. And uh, today morning he came to the two services and just said thank you and he gave a small testimony. So on his behalf and the family, I want to thank you all for praying. Uh, he's going through the bridge chemo uh, at home for another two months. And in November, he has to go through a, a bone marrow test. Uh, to check that the marrow is clean and there are no cancer cells, which we believe that it is clean and he will only stand here and testify again. But thank you so much for praying for Danny and his family and our families and uh, continue to pray. And we are thank God for having led him today to share a small uh, testimony in the Telugu services. If you have accepted uh, Jesus as your personal savior and have gone through the act of baptism, Irrespective of whichever denomination you belong, you're more than welcome to take part in this communion. So even as we sing this song, if you are prepared to take part, I request you to stand. And for those who are at home and are prepared to take part in the communion, I request you to keep the bread and the juice ready. After this song and prayer, we will take part together. Skilled to understand what God has will, what God has planned. I only know at His right hand stands one who is my Savior. I take Him as His word and
loving heavenly father we thank you lord for giving us this privilege to come to this table we recognize oh lord that you have sent your dear son jesus to this very earth and for having given him up onto that cross it was my place oh god it was our place he offered himself up completely and paid the penalty of sin we stand forgiven at the foot of the cross thank you for lord paying that price and setting us free and for cleansing us from our sin we pray for the bread and the juice that we kept ready here and at every home we recognize and we acknowledge that they are symbolic of the body and the blood of your dear son jesus that was shed for my sin and our sins and the sins of mankind even as we obey the command that was given by him that we need to do this in remembrance of him may we just not do it as a ritual but help us to do it out of that relationship that we have with you and with a heart filled with gratitude help us to partake in jesus precious name i pray amen for i received from the lord that which i also delivered to you that the lord jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take it this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me giving thanks to god I request you to accept this bread. In the same manner he also took the cup after supper saying, "This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Giving thanks to God, may we accept this grape juice." please be seated if there is anyone here who has come for the first time we want to recognize your presence and if if there is someone here i request you to stand if you come for the first time if there is anyone if there is no one that's absolutely fine but if there is someone we request you to stand we don't want to embarrass you but uh, why don't we clap and thank thank you for coming god bless you god bless you if you're celebrating your birthdays or wedding anniversaries last week or today I request you to stand so that we'll just thank god for giving you yet another wonderful year last week or today anybody birthdays and wedding anniversaries wonderful why don't we clap God bless you may God grant you many more wonderful blessed years even as we pray uh, if you have any other prayer requests this is the time because we don't have time to pray for everyone while you're going back so I request all those who have prayer requests to stand so that we will remember whatever that prayer request is and with that we close that as we, there is no change in the timings the timings are the same so uh, please come on time so that uh, you can go back well in time and parking please don't park in this by lanes or side sides any of these roads that are inside because uh, uh, let us uh, ensure that people don't complain uh, either you have to find some place on the road which is not easy as i told there is a place close by alif school even that parking is getting full is what i heard from the volunteers so but then uh, there is no other opportunity right now uh, so try and find some place on the road or go to alif school and if there is place there hopefully it will be there for uh, english service for sure please park your cars there and come two wheeler parking and all is in the side and and in the cellar just beside uh, this to my left and you can use both of them enough parking for two wheelers for sure let us pray loving heavenly father we thank you lord for giving us yet another wonderful time thank you o master for being with us through the three services that happened here for the hundreds of people that came here for the thousands who flocked in virtually across this globe 
O oh Master, thank you for your presence. For the way, O oh Master, you reveal yourself. It is just amazing. O oh Lord, thank you for each one who is here and for all those who joined us virtually. Thank you for the offering that all of them have brought to your sanctuary. Pray that you give us them heavenly wisdom to use it for the expansion of your kingdom. Thank you for those who come here for the first time. Thank you for those who have celebrated their birthdays and wedding anniversaries. Pray that you crown them with many more wonderful blessed years. Reveal your purposes and may those purposes be fulfilled in their lives. Especially remember each one right now, O oh Master, for they have certain needs. You are a God who sees. O oh Master, I pray that you help them at their point of need. That is all that we need, O oh Master. Your intervention in your special way. So that they see their hand in their lives. And O oh Master, be able to commit their situation into your loving care, knowing that you will take them to the other side. Especially pray that they have the wisdom from your word. And O oh Master, reckon and realize that sometimes we could be in the storm while we are in the very center of your will. Yes, O oh Lord. And because of your promise, because of your power, and because of who you are, you will surely take us to the other side. Thank you for that reassurance. And pray that each one of them stay calm within themselves even as they face certain storms in their lives. Thank you for Brother Fini Prem Kumar and his family and the ministry that he's involved in and the passion that he has to take your gospel across the globe. Continue to use him mightily. Oh Lord, even as we are heading back home, be with us, lead us, guide us, and help us, O oh God, to live lives that bring glory and honor to you. Until we meet again, your promise is that your presence will go with us. So with that promise, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins and forgive those who sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before his glorious presence, to God alone who is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, through Jesus Christ our Lord, throughout all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Raise it.